of water that moves over the land surface begins as falling rain. During heavy rains, not all the water can be absorbed by the soil, so some must run off, collecting in puddles or following any slope it finds. If you look closely after a rain on a hillside near your home, you will find many small streams forming as water moves downhill. These small streams join one another and their volume increases until they begin to cut small gullies in the land surface. They merge again and again to form larger streams and rivers. The flowing water continues moving downhill until finally it reaches its ultimate goal, the ocean. From the time a drop of water strikes the earth until it reaches the ocean, its behavior is determined by the slope of the land. Where slopes are steep, the water moves downhill with enough force to cause several kinds of erosion. The force of water flowing rapidly over the bottom may pluck a rock from the bottom of the stream and push it along, causing it to roll or slide down the stream bed. As rocks roll down the stream channel, they crash into one another, wearing each other down by a process called abrasion. As they are reduced in size, they may reach a point where they begin to bounce up in the water. This process called saltation causes the pebble-sized particles to wear down even further until they reach a point where they're small enough for the current to carry the material as a suspended load of sand or silt. Also, some of the material in the bottom may dissolve in the water and be carried downstream until it reaches a point where the water evaporates and the material is precipitated. Rapidly flowing water has many currents moving in several directions at different speeds. Where water swirls around an obstruction, the racing currents spin small rocks around and around, grinding holes in the stream bed. The rocks in this pothole were left behind when the water receded during a drought. The powerful force of a waterfall can gouge similar holes in the rocks at the base of the falls. As a stream drops in altitude, the slope gets smaller and the stream slows down. Material that was carried along by rapidly flowing water falls out of the slower currents. The heaviest materials fall out first, followed by lighter and lighter material, until finally, in calm water far out in a lake or sea, the fine grain silt and mud slowly settles out. When a stream slows down on land at the base of a mountain or the bottom of a road cut, the slowing of the waters results in a fan-shaped deposit geologists call an alluvial fan. They use the word alluvium to describe all the kinds of materials that are deposited by flowing water. So an alluvial fan is a fan-shaped body of material deposited by a stream. If the current slows down because it enters a body of water, the deposit takes a little different form and is called a delta. Large deltas around the world form where major rivers flow into seas or oceans.
flowing streams also deposit material where water slows down at a turn in the stream channel. Sand and gravel bars form because the slower water cannot carry as heavy a load. Rushing floodwaters can be very destructive, and not just to buildings and bridges. Floods also carry tremendous amounts of soil downstream, usually topsoil that has washed from nearby farmland. But in flat-lying floodplains, where the rivers cover the fields, they are more gentle and leave behind rich deposits of topsoil for future crops. A braided stream is made of small streams which weave in and out much like strands in a braided rope. It is caused by a lack of water or an excess of sand and mud which clog the channel, dividing it with many small islands. Every river, stream, creek, and gully drains an area called its watershed. The watershed for every major river is made up of the drainage areas of smaller rivers. Each river in turn is supplied by smaller streams, each draining a particular area. The high points that separate each watershed from all the other watersheds are called divides. Since the early settlement of this country, roads were laid along the ridges that formed these divides because they provided high and relatively level paths of travel. But in the mountains, the situation is reversed. Because the slopes are so steep, the roads follow the streams through the valleys rather than attempting to travel the ridges. The slope of a stream controls the speed of the water flowing within its banks. Generally, the faster water flows, the more material it erodes and the faster it cuts down into the earth. If the gradient of a stream is steep, its cutting action moves the stream downward rapidly creating a V-shaped valley with smooth, steep sides. Where the stream encounters harder rocks, waterfalls and rapids form, and the fast-flowing water tends to keep the channel straight. Geologists call this steeply sloping stream a youthful stream. The same stream at a more gentle slope does less downcutting and more eroding along the sides of its channel. Such streams usually have a number of smaller streams called tributaries feeding into the larger stream. By the time a stream reaches this stage in its development, it has usually eroded through the harder rocks that produce waterfalls and rapids in youthful streams. Because of the gentler slope and the increased cutting in the sides of their channels, these streams are called mature streams. Mature channels wander and weave back and forth, changing the youthful sharp V-shaped valley to a wider flat-bottomed V-shape. The flat bottom will fill with water during floods and is called a floodplain. As years pass and the stream continues to wear down the land, the slope gets smaller and smaller, side cutting increases, and the channel's wandering becomes pronounced enough for geologists to name the process meandering. This old age stream valley has a broad flat shape, with the meanders causing the stream to snake back and forth across it in great loops. Meandering streams are most common near shorelines or where the streams flow across large flat areas. Meanders can grow until the river cuts itself off by creating a new channel. This leaves the old meander loop to form an oxbow shaped lake, which will eventually fill and become a swamp. When floods occur on old age streams, 
The waters drop most of their load very near the channel, building natural levees or dikes. As the water spreads across the floodplain, it drops most of its material so that by the time it reaches the outer edges of the valley, it has almost no load. As a result, most floodplains slope downward from the stream to the edge of the valley. It isn't unusual for a stream to begin at its headwaters as a youthful stream with a steep slope. cut down toward the ocean as a mature stream with a lesser slope, and finally enter the ocean as an old age stream with very little slope. But sometimes events within the earth cause the land itself to rise or fall, thus changing the slope of the land and radically altering the slope of a stream. A stream valley may be rejuvenated from old age to youth like the San Juan River in Utah. The river had formed well-established meander loops as a mature stream before the land began rising, causing the San Juan to cut youthful V-shaped valleys with the older meanders still in place. When the land rises very slowly, a river may be able to cut down fast enough to maintain its position. The result may be a stream cutting through mountain ridges forming a water gap. Such gaps were extremely important to early settlers who used them as gateways to the west. When the land rises faster than the stream can erode the land, what might have been a water gap becomes a wind gap. The stream, unable to keep pace with the rising land, divides into two streams flowing away from a new divide. The landforms shaped by streams of running water are almost endless in their variety. Why don't you take a new look at the drainage systems near your home by walking along the streams? I think you'll be amazed at all the new things you'll see.